It's gonna take a little while for that carb to get fuel in it again. Or maybe it'll just work on the first try. Hey everyone, back with another episode of Stuff and Things. We're jumping into the stage two performance mods on my 2021 Honda Ruckus. If you haven't caught the last video, we've already added a few little performance mods up that top speed just a little bit. You can find that video right at the link right up here in the cards. Now today we're going to be adding the rest of the mods that I have. We're looking at a decompression tube, a new exhaust, a new intake, and we're also going to rejet the carbs in this thing. This is going to involve stripping down the ruckus quite a lot, so let's just give this a try. And now we are pretty much stripped down to the point that I need to be at. So first thing I'm probably going to do is remove the carburetor. I may have to remove a few other parts to get ready for the exhaust install. And this isn't going to be a thorough walkthrough video. There's a ton of good videos out there. If you guys want to figure out how to do this stuff for yourself, I'm personally learning about these motors as I go. So come with me for the journey. All right, now the carburetor has been removed. That was pretty simple. Start with the throttle cable, get that out of the way. Oh, we are dripping gas. You remove the electrical, the coolant lines, the gas line, which I currently have pinched off, so it's just a little bit of fuel leaking out of the carburetor itself. Now we can open this thing up and rejet it. All right, so over here on the workbench, we are still draining gasoline out of this thing. You can actually loosen this screw here, which will allow the gas to come out of the float bowl. It's going to evaporate, so it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna just snug that up. Should have really done that from the get-go. Now we are going to break into this thing. There are three screws, one, two, and three. Now with those screws out, we have access to the jets. Now for these jets, we have a main jet and an idle jet. These are pretty simple to take out. Just a flathead screwdriver. And now we will replace those with the new jets, which should give us some better fuel. So main jet, just gonna finger tighten these. Idle jet. And now these really don't need to be crazy tight in here. Just gonna snug them up like that. And there are the nice new jets. Can replace the float bowl now. Get all these screws back in. And now for the other side. Now for this side here, supposedly this tiny little shim right here, this little guy right here will help you if you are bogging down under mid throttle. This is another thing that you can sort of tune for your own scooter, your elevation, rider weight, stuff like that. So we're gonna remove this top cover now. I'm just gonna start with the shim in right from the get-go, and then if need be, I can pop it off and take it out of there. Now there are a lot of small pieces in here, like this little spring and this diaphragm. You wanna be careful with this because it's a little bit fragile. So here you will see this tiny little needle which is going up into the carb there, into the jet. Take a six mil socket in here. So when you pop that loose, you have a tiny little spring here and then the needle. Now this tiny little shim is going to go on top of this needle here and then all the way down to the end like that. And then we will drop this back in. All right, that was a little difficult to show on camera there, but now we've got this thing back in place. Now I'm going to reinstall this piece with the socket. Should just click into place. And now I should be able to reassemble. I'm gonna make sure that that needle is not getting bent when dropping it in here. Put this diaphragm back into place. Now once that diaphragm is seated properly, make sure it is lined up all the way around. You can reinsert the spring and then put this top cover back on. All right, so I was putting the carburetor back in when I realized we're doing an intake too and I'm gonna to have to remove some of these pieces to actually get rid of all this. So 
Now I'm gonna pause on the carburetor and we're gonna work on the air box over here. So these are 10 mil bolts, there's three of them. Now I can slowly start to remove this. Now we've got a few more hoses here. We're gonna start by removing this top one, the little spring clamps around them. All right, I've got the entire air box removed now and I'm just working on cleaning up some of these lines that we are no longer going to use. This line right here connects down to a plate and I don't have a block off plate for that, but I do need to block that off. So what I think I'm going to do here is I'm gonna give this a shot. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm gonna cut this tube. And now I'm going to take this little black plug here, which came out of this on the air box. I'm also gonna take this little clamp. Now I'm going to put this into the tube that I cut and hopefully that will work for this application. All right, now that we've got some of the hoses cleaned up here, we're going to begin to reinstall everything. So first up, instead of the tube that was coming off here, we're going to install this little filter. This is just held on with a simple hose clamp. Now while I'm here, I might as well reinstall this throttle cable, which I'll have to do from the other side of the bike. And now for the new intake itself, it's got the little stack on it with a support bracket and a hose clamp. Now I'll connect this to the carburetor. Sort of line up where this is going to go. And now we can secure this bracket. Now I've got one more thing before we try to crank this thing, decompression tube. This one's pretty simple. I'm gonna take out oil plug. Oil actually still looks pretty good in this thing. There's really only like 350 miles on it so far. Now I'm going to use this included little nipple here to put in its place. Screw that down and then tighten it up just gently with a 17 mil. Now I'll take the tube itself with an included hose clamp, get that onto the little nipple. Now push down the hose clamp, get that tightened down. Now I will take the other end of this tube, put the little atmospheric plug in here. Going to tighten a hose clamp around this one. Now I will just fish this up through the frame since I'm probably going to be putting the top cover back on. I'm just gonna kind of tuck this so it's a little bit hidden. And I think I'm actually going to even shorten this hose a little bit. And just like that, I've got the decompression tube running up to this little bung underneath the frame, the end cap on there. And now we should be ready to fire it up. All right, moment of truth. I hope I put everything back to where it should be. It oh, looks like it works. It's gonna take a little while for that car to get fuel in it again. Or maybe it'll just work on the first try. can hear that intake. Now for the exhaust. Before we get into the exhaust, I think I wanna go and check out a top speed run real quick. So I'm gonna put most of this back together. And then the exhaust, I think that one's gonna be pretty easy. So let's get all this back together, and go for a spin. Uh. <laughs> all right guys, um, hope you're ready for this. The idle is a little low right now so i'm going to need to tweak that a little bit obviously we're messing with we're messing with the air and the fuel and everything so it's going to take a little bit of tweaking one thing that i should be able to tweak is the stack that's coming out of this new intake this thing is significantly louder now and i haven't even put the exhaust on yet so if I pull that end piece in and out, I can sort of fine tune the amount of air that's actually getting in there. I don't know if I should pull it out or push it in to start, but I'm probably gonna save the tuning and all that stuff for another video. For now, I just wanna see if slapping all of these parts on, if we increase in speed or decrease in speed, we've definitely increased in decibels. I never really wanted this thing to be super loud, so I'm hoping the exhaust isn't like really loud. And then in the future, I may just run a filter on here instead of this stack because it's kind of obnoxious right now, not gonna lie. 
So far the speed feels relatively the same as it did when we started. Doing 35, 36 on this little flat, 37. Now let's see how it compares to going downhill like we did with the others. This intake sounds like a freaking butt call. I'm also curious if these injectors and I mean everything that I've installed so far takes a little bit to break in so everything kind of seats properly. So here we go downhill 39, 40, 41, 42, 45, 46. Alright so we are going a little bit faster than before. 46 miles an hour and that's with absolutely no tuning. I haven't changed the pulley slider weights, haven't adjusted the intake at all. I shouldn't really have to do anything with the carbs. Let's check out what that actual top speed was. 46.1. Okay, so hopefully we can get like 10 extra horsepower with this exhaust. <laughs> no, that's not gonna happen, but. Let's head back to the garage and get that thing installed. All right guys, now we're moving on to the exhaust install. This is gonna be the final part of this. It's gonna be pretty straightforward, much like every other motorized thing out there. I'm gonna unbolt the header pipe, loosen up the rear, pull the whole old one off, and then slowly install the new one. You're gonna need a 10 mil and a 12 mil to get the bolts, which will help you remove the stock exhaust. All right, header is loose. Now for the support bracket. Now when you loosen this next bolt, you gotta hold this in place. The exhaust is still a little warm. Now I can slowly drop this down. I should also mention that I removed the rear fender for this part. It was kind of loose after taking off the air box, so that will not be going back on anytime soon. Just sort of wiggle that loose from the header and the stock exhaust is off. You wanna make sure you keep this gasket here because that is going to go onto the new exhaust. Now for the exhaust, I opted for a carbon fiber Yoshi pipe. I've had good luck with uh, Yoshimira stuff in the past. I've already sort of pre-assembled this, so I did put the header pipe on with the little spring. They do include a little spring tool so you can stretch that out, which is a nice touch. And then right here I have the actual support bracket, which is going to mount to additional support brackets on the frame. Put the hardware in place there just so I know where everything goes. And now I will start with the header. Don't forget the little gasket. That's gotta be on there. Now the header is back on the studs and I'm putting the stock nuts back into place. I'm not gonna tighten them super tight yet because it will need a little bit of adjustment once it's actually together. Now for the support bracket, you have an angled bracket which will go on the inside, spacers, and then 12 millimeter bolts. This is going to mount right back up to the stock position. And now to secure the exhaust. Now that everything's on here, it looks like it fits pretty nicely. I'm going to snug up the header bolts and then make sure everything else on here is tight. Since I've been building this, I have not Loctited any of the new parts. So once everything is all set and ready to go, I will go back through and loosen things, Loctite everything. And hopefully nothing will fly off of this while I'm driving down the road. All right guys, here we go. Completed project for now. It is now the next day because it was raging hot yesterday. So now we're gonna test the top speed on the same streets as before. So a quick recap between stage one and stage two install. We started with the CDI up here to get rid of the rev limiter. I then opened up the cover and we put in a high speed barrier with some different weights in there so hopefully that will open up quicker, better acceleration, higher top end. And then for all of the stage 2 components, stripped the bike down, started with rejetting the carb. I also added this new intake here which I adjusted a little bit from before I pushed this in a little bit. Also added the decompression tube which honestly I don't know if that will do much for us here but also Yoshimir exhaust full exhaust system and I think that's about it. So a lot of changes that may seem like big changes but honestly all the work was pretty easy. I also adjusted the idle. So this thing's actually pretty quiet at idle still but there you guys got a little bit of a 
sound test on this new exhaust. And when you're wide open, it is loud. <laughs> I never really wanted to draw attention to myself while riding around on the Ruckus, but I will say it accelerates up to 30 way quicker than before, which is nice. Will we get a little bit more top speed? I'm not so sure. I think I will have to do a little bit of tuning to a couple things, maybe change out some of those weights in the variator. I could also shed some weight overall. I mean, myself personally, but also the actual scooter. I can get rid of a lot of the plastic fairings. I definitely want to get a lower seat. I want to clean up all the electrical. So I'm going to remove some of the brackets up here, get some lower turn signals, new tail assembly, tail light integrated. If you guys know of a good place to order a bunch of different parts like that at once, let me know because I'm definitely looking to mod this thing a little bit more now that I know all the inner workings of it. So here we're going uphill, saw about 34 there, starting to slow down, still holding just above 30 though. And like I've been mentioning in the previous video and this video, this isn't like ideal testing. For a good baseline, I want like a two mile long flat road, which we'll go to in a future video. I want to start from a dead stop, see how long it takes me to get up to 30. And then on a completely flat road, ideal conditions, I want to see how fast this thing can actually top out at without using a little bit of gravity behind me. So here we're doing 38. It feels like we're already going a little bit quicker than we were before. It definitely feels a little different now with all of these mods. So let's get over to this downhill and hopefully we get closer to 50. I don't have super high hopes that we'll hit 50, but let's see. This thing is loud compared to before. <laughs> definitely not neighborhood friendly. All right, I'm gonna tuck a little bit so the camera angle is gonna get a little bit weird. We're at 41, 42, 43, 44. 45, 46, come on, 47, yeah, 48, oh, 48, I saw 48 for a split second there, and not hitting super high RPMs, which is good, I don't want to blow this thing up, I don't have a tack on here yet, 5, alright, I think that's about it, looked like we hit 48 there. Oh, it lied to me. It says top recorded speed was 47.5. <laughs> I guess it must round up, but overall that's an improvement for every mod that we've had thus far. Now to get three and a half more miles per hour out of this thing, it's gonna be tough. I could change the drive face. I could lighten it up, like I mentioned. And while it doesn't seem like a whole lot, I think shaving weight and allowing that weight on the inside to be easier to turn, being a little bit lighter, I think that could help. The same company who makes the rev limiter remover also makes a new drive face, which is just like one ounce lighter, which again, doesn't seem like a lot, but it may work. I don't know. I can also still tune some of the stuff that we put on here, like the intake. The exhaust pretty much is what it is. The carbs, without completely rejetting it again, I think I'm kind of stuck with what I have for there. Overall, is it worth it? I don't know. I'm really just doing this for fun. I like working on motorcycles and scooters and all sorts of stuff with motors, so we got what was it maybe i think we started at around 41 so maybe like six miles per hour out of it so not a whole lot faster definitely accelerates quicker definitely sounds better but also some people may find this annoying like everyone in the community here but is it worth it for me yes because i like tinkering with stuff to someone who actually wants to make a ruckus faster you're probably better off with just swapping to a GY6 150 or something like that. Will I go down that route in the future? I don't know. Maybe. Now that I know the inner workings of this get motor, I wanted to keep the stock motor to keep it somewhat reliable. But at the same time, I'm not expecting like 
Grom top speed out of this. I did a little bit of work on the Grom. That thing does like 70 now. I wish this still did about 55. That would be the sweet spot for me. So over the next week or so, I'm going to kind of fine tune this thing, hopefully getting it running a little bit quicker. And then from that point, I'll bring you guys a moto vlog and let you know what I did and how I did it. So that's all that I have for today. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. If you are a ruckus tuner in the Denver metro area, let me know. Maybe you could uh, help me out with some of the things that I've been working with. Idle sounds pretty good after adjusting that screw. So. I think that's where we're going to leave it for today. If you guys are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe and make new videos every week. As always, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.